This IKEA potato peeler or vegetable peeler almost works, almost, but it doesn't. The co-worker gave it to me and said, look, this is broken, can you help? Well, I, I, yeah, not really, it's not gonna be fixed. And in this video, I'll explain why it can be fixed and what's wrong with it and whether the new one is gonna be an improvement on the old one or not. So, this old one has a tapered ABS handle. It could be black or white or maybe even red or whatever other color variation. So this is tapering and the new one is not. It's just parallel sides, yes? And it says IKEA on it like with raised letters. The product numbers on the old one are still somewhat barely visible. Three something, zero something something, 23, 18, dot 17. So there, those are the numbers, and on the new one, the product numbers are completely different. Made in China, proudly displayed on the label. So, let's see what's, what went wrong uh, with this one. See, this old one with the tapered handle is made of ABS plastic, and ABS cement is holding these two parts of the handle together. I had to put it in a vise, so those are the jaw prints from the vise, and this is how it's been taken apart. And of course ABS cement was applied here, and it broke out a little piece of plastic there. What lives inside is uh, that pin. Let's look at this metal here. This is a magnet. This is strongly magnetic, good quality. In SAE terminology, this is a 400 series martensitic steel. This one is a pin that's absolutely not magnetic except just the end of it here very very slightly. That magnetism is a result of pinching the end of the pin like so and it's undergone some cold work here and some plastic deformation and it changed the magnetic properties. The new one is also magnetic so that's made of the same steel. These two go together inside the handle and this pin goes into this U-shaped channel and that's how it's held in place. This one goes through the handle, through that hole in the plastic there, just like that. And then the two parts are fitted together so that's how it is in normal operation. And then this one is cemented onto the handle just like so. There, vegetable peeler or potato peeler. So. What went wrong with this one? Oh, uh, why can't I glue it back together the same way? Yeah, that's fairly straightforward because the pin can be removed too easily. There, it's uh, it's fing it's called finger fit or snap fit, and uh, this is this isn't anything new to science. Lego blocks have been designed to be finger fit together. Now this originally was not finger fit or snap fit. It was more of a force fit. These, this one doesn't come out with the same amount of hand force. It will rip out of course, but this one is a lot easier to remove there with a little bit of twisting to it there. So this kind of issue is, like I said, not new to science. It is called fit and uh, it's uh, found in in books like this one here, what kind of book? Uh, Machinery's Handbook. So here is 3,000 pages of this stuff. Uh, machinists use this book, uh, there's some good engineering in it too. And uh, what we have here is metric, I'm just going with metric because this is an IKEA item, so we'll go with metric. So it says metric fits, and in this metric fits you see the dimensional difference between these two parts and I'm gonna call this one a pin and this one is gonna be a hole even though it's not technically a hole it's a u-shaped channel but we'll go with a hole so these two parts are represented here in the picture you see this one says shaft we're gonna go with that that's the pin and this one says hole hole tolerance and so that would be this and so how gappy these two are, or how not so gappy, or even less, or even less, or how much they overlap. Here's another picture, oh, same contact, don't, don't worry about minutia differences. So 
how much the gapage there is between the two of them or how much they overlap to provide this to provide this interference fit this uh, um, snap fit that can be taken apart by finger forces like Lego block or how much uh, hammering is needed such as hammering is needed for uh, placing a wheel bearing into a hub you see that's hammered in so it's it's all being figured out coming out of books like this and these are fit classes and uh, all you need to do is just open the book and look up your fit classes so there's hole and shaft uh, ignore the minutiae detail those are some of the fit classes for the interference fit so some of them are requiring little force there you can read it the little force or a lot more force okay so where here the last one is heavy pressing forces no so this one is a light one okay so that's where this information is coming from it's a light one but as a light uh, snap fit it doesn't work out so well and the new one is different now the reason why there is a light uh, force required is because this is broken it doesn't look broken but look closely if I push the pin further in now you can see that it's cracked but now the my my nail and the metal is pretty tight against the lens on the camera so I can just barely put my fingernail there there you can see that crack line okay and when I pull the pin out that crack line very nearly disappears and becomes invisible see it's it, it it can be seen but you really need to be looking at it maybe not a microscope but really really carefully so as soon as the tool breaks or falls apart that gap closes and you, and you can't see it this one is hidden inside the handle and this one doesn't look faulty so the reason why there is a crack line in the in the in the hole here the hole, the, you know, the part that forms the hole is because this one could be too thin. It could be made thicker, but extra metal is not IKEA's favorite thing to make this out of thicker metal. IKEA doesn't really like donating excess quantity of metal to the customer eh, unless it's really necessary. Or, of course, you can make this one thinner, make the pin thinner. Now, if you make the pin thinner, or make this one a little thicker. Uh, if, you, if you make the pin thinner, it's gonna be instead of a uh, hammer it together and it holds together for the life of the tool, it's gonna become again a Lego block, very light snap fit. So that's not good either if the pin is thinner. Uh, it's unlikely that it's gonna be ever be made thicker, but that would be a solution. Or another solution could be is that if this part of the blade or cutting blade here could be annealed or tempered in other words it needs a little heat treatment just heating up and just and just let it cool down uh, what happens uh, or why that helps is because this used to be a flat sheet of metal this part and out of a flat sheet of metal this is cut out with a cookie cutter type uh, industrial operation called punching so these are punched out of a sheet and then bent to shape here where the bend is stronger or, or here is where the bend is greater the metal goes through cold work or, or uh, work hardening more it's called work hardening so that hardening of the metal needs to be removed by this annealing so it doesn't crack and it restores the tools ductility or the metals ductility so it doesn't crack out there so is IKEA gonna make this thicker no is IKEA make it make the end annealed no have they redesigned the tool yeah uh, what did they change the shape of the handle is that important in the kitchen uh, in terms of ergonomics yeah not really especially if the functionality is not there in the first place so what are the changes between the old one and the redesigned one microscopic 
Here is a metric micrometer and I've taken measurements of the thickness of the sheet metal used in the old one. That's 0.81 millimeters. Thickness of the sheet metal used in the new one is 0.79 millimeters. So that's a difference of two hundredth of a millimeter. So the new one is made of thinner sheet metal, so probably has a little more give. I doubt it. This two hundredth of a millimeter is otherwise that many inches so it's uh, half a one thousandth of an inch it's five ten thousandths of an inch all right it's not appreciably thinner another difference between the two of them is that here on the old one the channel ends or have a have a gap between them you can see that gap and on the new one there is no such gap here between these two. You can see that the ends of the folded metal there, right there, that I, when I, where I pull it out of the handle, right there you can see the folded ends touch each other. So, is this a significantly improved design? I don't think so. What would be a significantly improved design if this piece was rigidly molded into the handle. So that I think would work best. So it, it's still a two dollar potato peeler. It's uh, never gonna be, it, it hasn't been improved upon as is. Uh, IKEA is not gonna update it in any other way other than cosmetic changes. Uh, the, the old one failed, this one is garbage, just, just stay away from it. Thank you very much for watching.